Hello and welcome to cricketnext.com. Uh, I am Vinith Ramakrishnan and I am with uh, R uh, Sridhar. Uh, Sridhar Ramakrishnan and a man who no needs no introduction if you follow cricket but still uh, a certified coach uh, uh, Ranji trophy player representing Hyderabad and a small matter of uh, the fielding coach for the Indian national team for well over 7 years. Uh, He's uh, done with his tenure and he's here right now at the St. Jones uh, Coaching Foundation running the Crick Coaching Beyond uh, Academy. I'm here in Hyderabad to cover the World Cup games and we thought we'd catch up with him. Uh, welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vinit. Uh, wonderful uh, being on the show. Sure. So, it's a World Cup uh, fever. Uh, even though Hyderabad doesn't have India games, but still, I mean, the fervor, the, the, the buzz I could see in Hyderabad for Mohammad Siraj, the local boy, is there. Uh, and before we went live, we did talk about, you know, India's chances and everything. It's an overwhelming favourite. India are overwhelming favourites. But what is the reason? So, yeah, I mean, uh, you rightly said that it is uh, India's World Cup to lose and India has been extremely well prepared. I think well primed is the right word I would use uh, for the Indian team uh, ahead of the World Cup. A lot of credit has to go to the BCCI and the Indian cricket team management, Rahul Ravid and his team of uh, coaches and uh, support staff, along with Captain Rohit Sharma, NCA and the rest of the support staff, who just managed the team in such a way over the last couple of years, so that they have the best talent available in prime form for the World Cup. I mean, uh, I'm so proud that this happened uh, perfectly. And uh, it happened for the World Cup which is being played in India. So all the more reason for Indian team to be at their best. And that is the reason why India are the overwhelming favourites. Absolutely. That is the reason why. I mean, everybody is saying, uh, not apart from just the home conditions, you know, this is, these are the reasons why. And also, interestingly, I mean, it's, it's probably would be a swan song for some of the big players and you know, some of the players that you've been part of you've been with that setup uh, we will come to that fielding uh, bit of it uh, later but it's a big big you know uh, thing for these players and i'm not naming them you probably know who i'm talking about big big uh, thing it's a pressure is it what 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 would be going through the minds of these players having you, you know been been part of them you've seen them inside out what is the, that thing that will be going through them at a whole home world cup for these guys I mean, it means a lot, I'm sure, despite uh, many of them having played more than three World Cups. Uh, I think uh, the home World Cup uh, means a lot. I mean, Ash and Virat have been part of our home World Cup already, so yeah. they know what it is uh, to you know, be a part of a home World Cup. But that team had a lot of experience as well in terms of, a, uh, you know, they had a Sachin Tendulkar playing, there is Zahir Khan playing, you know, there was so much of a wealth of experience in the team and they knew how to embrace the pressure. The reason I am saying embrace the pressure is because this team as well has to embrace the pressure. They need to enjoy the pressure. Yes, it's a home World Cup, uh, which means a lot of uh, positives like knowing the conditions, uh, knowing the crowd, kn knowing everything about uh, what is going to be thrown at you. So, got to enjoy that, got to enjoy the conditions as well and uh, embrace the pressure, you know. Uh, enjoy it, that's the key, that's the key. And I'm sure all these boys are equipped to do that. Many of them are playing the second World Cup, a lot of them are playing the third World Cup. Virat and Ash, like I said, are playing the fourth World Cup, or uh, Ash third World Cup as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's the key, how well they embrace the pressure. There's a lot of travel for the Indian team, probably is the only team which is playing all matches at different venues. Yeah. So that's, that's a little bit of an added, uh, a bit of a disadvantage, I would say, because every venue wants to have a pie of the uh, share of the Indian team playing. And uh, unfortunately, Hyderabad missed out, like you said being such a wonderful venue but uh, uh, that is what it is about the Indian team in this World Cup they have got to embrace the pressure and have fun have fun have fun and you mentioned about uh, the travelling I mean I think they are travelling 15,000 kilometers in total that's huge <laughs> yeah that's huge uh, so let's uh, uh, rain down on the World Cup thing let's focus on the fielding uh, bit of it your tenure 2014 to 2021 looking back I mean it's been two years away from you know of that kind of maddening hectic schedule uh, right now i am guessing the schedule is quite uh, calm calm down mellowed down looking back uh, at that tenure i mean your memories and w w what do you have to say about you know when i talk to you about you know give me a throwback of that uh, seven years look i was very fortunate to be very honest i was mighty mighty fortunate and god has been very kind on me so when i when i when i when ravi called me for that indian team tenure i had a captain like ms dhoni 
to you know to fall back upon. He was so cool. He was so welcoming. Such a fabulous human being. And you, know, you can never have enough of him. And the way he made me feel welcome when I when I went to him for the first time is something which is very close to my heart. And uh, and also we had a very young team. The team had just won. a lot of um, seniors had retired after playing the World Cup and winning the World Cup in 2011. It's about two years from the World Cup. We had a very young team, very athletic team, and we had a gun fielding team. To be very very honest, you had the Ryanas, Umesh was at his best. You had Virat, Jadeja, Rohit. We had such a good fielding team, young athletic team. The fitness culture had well and truly kicked in, and uh, it was uh, very f uh, easy for me to actually, you know, just uh, find Chunir and there. We had a lot of fit cricketers and enthusiastic young men. And then Virat took over captaincy and made it even more mandatory. Fielding became such a prominent a part of the Indian cricket team. Again, big thanks to Virat, you know, for bringing that culture. I think that's going to become a tradition, what, what Virat did, you know, completely. Uh, take the mantle from MS and, you know, pass it on and create create a Indian team that's, that's, uh, that's what, what can I say, I'm not getting the right, right word, it's humongous, a giant, you know, creating such a fabulous cricket team. Uh, so again, working with Virat, or you know, during his during his team tenure, the vision of Virat was obviously very clear, being an aggressive fielding unit. And Ravi obviously seconded that, and uh, it was easy for me to work. And we had a lot of emphasis on fitness, so uh, it was fe handling the fielders became uh, a lot easier and a lot more fun for me. So I was very fortunate to have people like MS Virat uh, being at the helm of affairs uh, during my tenure. And uh, and subsequently Rohit as well. Too. He captained a couple four tournaments. He captained when I was there. And we won most of them. And uh, then Ajinkya in the famous Australian series. So fortunate to have very good captains, very understanding captains with a vision. I mean, I worked. And Ravi Shastri and Anil Kumble obviously great head coaches to work with. Ravi Bai is someone who I really look up to as one of my mentors. So working under his vision was uh, a, a great learning for me. And it, it, it's interesting that you mentioned that, you know, you had a very athletic team, but there was a period like from 2014 to probably 2017, the fielding side of it had a huge improvement and you do, you know, give, uh, being modest uh, yourself, giving credit to somebody like a Virat Kohli because that was the vision that they had, but that vision had to be executed and you probably were that, you know, a guy to do that. So what went about that what was your in a way if i have to ask you the philosophy in terms of you know upping that fielding game i think the philosophy was being uh, honest and fearless fearless in giving you a hundred percent on every ball you field and being honest in saying that oh well i didn't give my hundred percent this ball let me go back and give my hundred percent next ball simple that was that was the philosophy with which uh, virat kohli operated being fearless but being extremely honest uh, uh, for the sake of the team and uh, getting the skills, the technical part right, getting the right fielders in the right positions, getting them to put their body on the line, these were the easy things to do because the, 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 the trust factor between the coach and the player was there and, uh, and uh, they also knew what the captain wanted from them. So, uh, I mean that was the easy part to do but I think the philosophy was being fearless and being brutally honest with yourself for the sake of the team. And you did briefly mention about the change in, you know, captaincy of MS Dhoni, Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma. And again, from a very fitness point of view, MS Dhoni is also fit, Virat Kohli is fit, but it's different kind of fitness there. So, did in something, anything change in terms of, you know, how did you approach in when MS Dhoni was at the helm and when Virat Kohli took over? It's interesting that you ask this because not many know MS was as, uh, as emphasized on fitness as... Uh, as uh, Virat was because I've heard him many times say how important fitness and fielding is in change rooms and he made no mistake, he made no bones about it. When he was unhappy with the fielder, you could, you, you know it, you know MS, you know when he's not happy. So I mean he, he was, uh, I mean, he, he did not, it's not that he was a little, uh, you know, laid back or easy on the players in terms of fielding and fitness. He was as, uh, I wouldn't say use the word strict or harsh, but he was, as demanding in terms of fitness and fielding as any other captain would. Virat, you could see it. With yeah. Virat, you could see it. That is the only difference. But uh, subsequent to that as well, the, the standards have really gone up. I always say, I've written it in my book as well, uh, fitness is now part of 
the skills. Earlier, they only in the late in the 60s, till the 60s and 70s, there only two skills in cricket: batting and bowling. The third skill fielding really came into prominence with the advent of television, with the advent of cricket matches being uh, televised. televised. You know, let's give credit to Kerry Packer. Then, you know, suddenly you're looking at, oh, the ball is near me and the camera is on me. I need to, you know, yeah. uh, kind of be not look very clumsy and pick the ball nice. So that's when people realize, okay, fielding is also important. By the time the 90s came, by the time the 80 World Cups came, fielding became such an important part. I think in the 90s, there was another skill which came to cricket, which called fitness. Till then, fitness was not so important. But in the 90s, a South African team came in back from uh, their, uh, whatever, what do you call, uh, apartheid, apartheid ban. And ban, then, yeah. then they brought a different level of athleticism. And then you saw the Australians take it to a next level, although we were a little late to the party, but well, now we are well and truly uh, uh, leaders. And in 2008 was the next big revolution. And you know what is that talking yes, about. Yes, of the IPL changed the nature of the game, the face of the game. IPL is the Harvard of cricket. That's, that's a very interesting way of uh, putting out, uh, it out there. And you mentioned about how you know fielding aspect really changed, the perspective of it. From an Indian point of view, I mean, to a larger extent, the early 2000s was only Suresh Raina you looked up to and said, you know, gun fielder. Then came a Ravindra Jareja. And even in that, Suresh Raina era could be a Suresh Raina and a Yuvraj Singh, and there was a huge gap in fielding. But here it has changed. But then again, is it something, as you mentioned, that you were lucky enough to get this athletic people out there, or you really worked? I mean, Jadeja being there at the forefront and others, because there were quite a few bowlers who were not that athletic. I mean, I remember personally somebody like Bumrah when he started out, very clumsy as a fielder, but he has improved leaps and bounds. Somebody like a Muhammad Shami also. <laughs> somebody like a Muhammad Shami also. So, how was that of a big challenge for you in terms of getting everybody to that level, not to that level of maybe around the Jadeja but to uh, that par level the best they can be yeah the challenge was to get each fielder to the best they can be we don't want uh, uh, Shami since you mentioned Shami you don't want a Shami to be a jaunty roads but you want Shami to be the best Shami can be yeah. so that was a challenge and it, it was simple to get them aligned to the culture and the philosophy of the team mm -hmm. so sometimes it's just a conversation over a coffee Sometimes uh, it could be a hard uh, session out on the field, but the idea was to change the mindset of the athlete as to how the team looks at that athlete as a fielder and what he needs to give back to the team as a, um, as a fielder and how does he fit into the culture of the team. The culture was already set, it was already there, so all we needed to do is talk to them and get them to buy into that culture and get a, become a fit into that team. So with many of these youngsters also, now they are a fit. Now they are culturally fit into the team. Yeah. So uh, that come with, that came with stability as well. Stability in the support staff group, stability in the leadership group. That came with that as well. So yeah, it was a lot of hard work on the field. Make no mistake, there was a lot of hours and hours and hours of practice. But uh, it is also the change in mindset and the trust the players had in the team management and the uh, leadership group. Right, right. I'll stick to the fielding bit of it uh, here. 2021, I mean, your tenure had the highest of highs and a few lows as well. And the biggest high of probably of them all was the GABA 2021, the, 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 that series in its entirety. Just wanted your thoughts in terms of you were part of that, uh, you know, dressing room, a lot of injuries, a lot of players, new guys coming up. What was the mood like before the, 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 the momentous thing happened and after that? And how you think... That really transformed. I wouldn't use the word transform, but it became a new India altogether. Yeah, I mean, look, that series is, to me, you know, I mean, God was sitting in our dressing room at times, but uh, like uh, no, that, that to me is unbelievable. I mean, I remember each and every uh, moment of the series vividly. At the same time, everything seems to be such a, such a like a haze. At the same time, it's a, it's a blur. It's like you being in a zone, you know. You don't remember when you're in the zone. You don't remember. It's like a blur. But you also remember many things around it. So, oh uh, yeah, that was a tough series because we lost a lot of players due to various reasons. But it was a great chance for us to, you know, put their hand up and show what they can bring to Indian cricket. And that last day, the Gabba test. I mean, that, I mean you, you, could, you could live that day forever, you know. Yeah. Um, Shubman Gill setting it up before lunch. Pujara fighting it out in the middle phase and uh, the great Rishabh Pant, too young to be called great but 
what Rishabh did that, that afternoon was massive for Indian cricket, finishing it off. So we had three guys doing it and rest of them supporting them, the young team. Siraj leading from the front, the bowling attack. Just being two test matches old, uh, became leader of the pack. So our entire test attack was more than, not more than four tests old. So <laughs> that was uh, the way it was. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. I mean, it was something which... It was, uh, you know, someone rightly said India had already won, uh, you know, 2018-19 when we went to Australia. Mm. So there was this talk about, you know, player rotation, 2019 World Cup coming. And someone said, Look, we have won two World Cups, but we've never won a series in Australia. It's probably bigger than, uh, bigger than a World Cup at that point in time. Mm. Now we have won two back-to-back -back series in Australia. So, yeah, I mean, that definitely was as big as a World Cup. That's great. Uh, interesting that you talk about Rishabh Pant. I had a question ready on Pant. Again, uh, I was reading somewhere like from a fielding perspective, it was a challenge for you to, to, to get Rishabh Pant to what he is right now. But then again, I remember Rishabh Pant when he came in, his wicket keeping skill wise wasn't the greatest and skill you could see. It was not just about the skill. It was that fitness part of it that was also letting him down. What kind of a challenge was it, uh, you know, to, to get him to, to, to work with him? Again, like like I always like to do, I think I'll give a lot of credit to Pant himself for uh, understanding what the team needed. Obviously, like if, when he first came and he was still a young boy, flamboyant, not knowing what the culture of the team. It took a time for him to fit into the culture of the team, you know, what the management wanted, what what was the vision of the captain and the, and the coach. So uh, it took a bit of time for him to, you know, fit into that culture. But once he did, he fit and how, you know, you can say that. So. Yeah, I also kind of couldn't connect with him to be very honest initially because uh, there was a t way he learned uh, and I couldn't find that way. I was teaching the way I taught but unfortunately I was not cutting uh, the eyes you can say. But uh, credit to him, credit to Rishabh Pant and I thank him for that out in public for uh, you know bearing and uh, you know waiting for the time when suddenly we both found each other's uh, Connected. And it took a, it took about good 12 to 18 months, but then once we found that understanding, and then uh, as as they say, then we saw some good uh, magic happen with his wicket keeping. And I'm very fortunate. I'm very thankful to Bishop Pant for you know being a little changing his ways and coming to a, a midway where we both could uh, finally start trusting each other. But he was such a such a great guy to coach. You know, he's a wonderful kid. His thought process is different. Um, and uh, that is how it should be, isn't it? It should be different. Young, new generation of Indian kids, they're fabulous. I learned a lot from that kid. I learned a lot and it's really helping me in my uh, coaching at the grassroots level now. But he's a wonderful kid. Wonderful, wonderful kid. And it's quite interesting that you, you talked about how this Indian team is like mint ready and you you don't even have a Rishabh Pant in the team. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's how strong the Indian team currently is. Well, Let's uh, put that, that to rest. Now, let's talk about your current uh, obsession, so to speak, uh, a bit more thing. You are coaching here, uh, coaching uh, beyond at the St. John's Academy, uh, for coaching foundation, as I mentioned earlier. Just just give me a lowdown of uh, you know this entire setup. We are just here uh, on the uh, background. You can see the kids uh, the getting uh, coached and uh, yeah, practicing as well. Your lowdown of what exactly this is, the, the philosophy behind it, uh, you, Ravi Shastri and Bharat Arun, all three combined, you know, greatest minds, uh, so to speak. Or, or what's it all about? Well, we thought about this way back in 2019, uh, when our contracts got extended for another couple of years. We're thinking that we should do something not just for cricketers at the grassroots level, but also for coaches at the grassroots level. So basically, uh, when Ravi was the chairman, me, Arun, Dr. Kinjil, we were part of making the manual for uh, BCCI, while Dav Watmore was the director of cricket at the NCA. So he was the chairman of NCA, so we made the coaching manual and uh, it was a good success. Uh, we kind of tweaked the way NCA functioned way back then and uh, that also, you know, was really good. And then, then we moved on to the Indian cricket team and stuff. And 2019, we thought we must do more at the grassroots level because not everyone can go to the NCA. You know, because NCA is for selected elite players. And even same thing for coaches. There's so much of grassroots level coaching going on in India. But every coach could not uh, get themselves the coach education. Coaching is, is a skill, just like playing is. It's a, it's, playing doesn't qualify you to be a coach. So coaching has to be practiced. It's a skill. So we thought let's do something at the grassroots level and uh, open an 
Brick and Mortar Academy where we can coach a lot of young cricketers uh, from around the from around the country, not just at the grassroots level, but also for those um, high performance kids who who need it. So we we called St John's Sport Coaching Foundation and. They were happy to tie up with us and give us the place. So we developed the place into a high performance center. And we roped in Dr. Kinjal Suratwala as coach educating it. And our primary verticals are one, coaching uh, coaching kids at the grassroots level and uh, at the semi-elite level. And other uh, vertical which is uh, doing very good is our coach education programs. So we do um, uh, the foundation course uh, for coaches who can come here for six days. It's an on-site course because on-site course has a lot of advantages so it's an on-site course and uh, where they come and learning the basics foundation of coaching and also they get an opportunity to come and uh, uh, do our internship or an observership under master coaches to hone their coaching skills the coaching skills like throwing the ball hitting a ball meeting a ball you know throwing mm -hmm. for catching the basic to giving throwdowns the skills which you need to be a hands-on so yeah so we are very proud of this and uh, it's been doing really well god has been kind and uh, we have uh, educated more than uh, 350 coaches till today around the country and more than 253 kids come to this academy and we have another one in Chennai where more than 100 kids practice so uh, we chose Hyderabad and uh, Chennai because uh, I live in Hyderabad and Arun lives in Chennai so that we are co committed to the promise we make of quality coaching because uh, it, it makes a difference if me or Arun are there because we have that experience of coaching for more than two and a half decades. Having made a lot of mistakes, you know, along the way, we're still making mistakes, but having made a lot of mistakes along the way now, we kind of make lesser mistakes than what we used to a decade ago. So, yeah, so that is something which we're giving to the uh, thing. And uh, no, it's not a charitable organization. We do collect fees. We do collect fees, and uh, but we give back more than what we collect in terms of... Uh, in terms of uh, what we give to the kids in terms of quality we do offer scholarships but uh, only for those who deserve it only for the underprivileged but talent is a obviously a prerequisite so yeah it's going on well it's going well now we're tied up with Hindustan Unilever to uh, give scholarship to 25 girls so 25 girls in Hyderabad 25 girls in Chennai uh, get full coaching physiotherapy training strength and conditioning and mentoring uh, completely free of course and it's uh, it's taken care by Hindustan Unilever Limited. Great, fantastic. I mean giving back to cricket what cricket gave you. Uh, fantastic. Uh, it was it was lovely uh, chatting uh, with you, Thank Tom Krishnan Sridhar, with Vinit Ramakrishnan here. Uh, and before uh, I, I leave this, before I end this, I have two more questions and which is your finalist for the World Cup? India, Australia. And uh, whom, whom India plays in the semi-final? Whoever plays the other semi-final, if Australia is not playing against India in the semi-final, then India, Australia. India, Australia. And uh, who do you think the player of the tournament would be? And why? It's a tough call. You need a good all-rounder. I I would put a lot of money on players like Sam Curran, Ben Stokes, Hardik Pandya, uh, Ravinder Jadeja. You know, who do both skills uh, to be player of the tournaments. But you know, if one of your openers gets going and scores 600 runs, like what Rohit did in the last World Cup, yeah. can, that can be phenomenal for any team. So you have a gill in our team to do that. But player of the tournament is a tough call to make, but I would want Hardik Pandya to be the player of the tournament. India was Australian, Hardik Pandya. Let's hope that uh, that happens. Uh, so that was uh, Ramushan Sridhar. Thank you very much for your time, sir. And it was lovely, uh, lovely uh, setup that you have here. And for all our Cricket News viewers, if you are looking for a good coaching you know, uh, center, probably this is the place that you want to Come. Sure is. Sure is. Sure is. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Sir.